Hello! In today's video, I will be showing you how I uploaded my Inktober 2020 designs to Redbubble, as well as Society6 and Threadless. So step one is to get your art. Then put it into a scanner. I'm just using my printer for this. Another option, which I will quickly cut to, is to use your phone to take a picture of your art. Make sure that you have good lighting so that you can see the entire piece. Back to scanning. So for me, I just hit overview and then it does the scan. And then I wanna change a couple of things before I hit scan. So I wanna make sure that I name it what I want it to be named. And it's very important that you change your image to 600 DPI. This will allow your picture to be scaled up much larger than it appears on the page. And then I just go ahead and I select the area that I want to scan. And then for me, I just go into image correction and I'm going to go with the defaults at first and then I will make adjustments as necessary. I just check over the scan. This looks a little dull, so I want to up the saturation a little bit and brighten it or darken it a little bit depending on what I'm going for. And you'll just see me do this a few more times. I like to do it at least three or four times just to get all my options. Sometimes I'll like go super, super saturated and like add some darkness to it just to see what the difference is. And then it's easier for my eye to notice what I want, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm doing in this section, basically is what I'm trying to say. And then once I figured out which one I wanted, I just labeled it as such. And I labeled the ones that I definitely didn't want as such. Because I'm indecisive, I kept a backup one. So I just have two, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this one. And then we're gonna head on over to Krita, which is what I will be using to make this into a lovely PNG. Now for new file, I usually use 5000 by 5000 with a 300 PPI. And then I just use the RGB alpha for settings. You can use and experiment with whatever you want. And then first things first, I'm going to save this right away just in case something happens so it can be saved and ready to go. Next, I go to layer, import, slash export, import, as paint layer. Doing this will create a new paint layer specifically for your image. As you can see here. Now, sometimes the wand tool doesn't always work in Krita if your lines aren't super thick. If you have thicker, darker lines, it's a lot easier to select things, but since the wand tool isn't working, I am just going to go ahead and take this selection tool um, I'm doing it really sloppy here just because I wanted to get it done and just show you how it works. And then what I wanna do is add a background that contrasts greatly with the image just to see the white parts surrounding it so we can get rid of that. And then I'm going to use this polyline tool to get up nice and close around the edges. So I want to make sure that the foreground color is filled for this polyline tool and make sure that it is an eraser as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and go along here a little bit sloppily just so I can get this bigger section out of the way because then I can focus more easily on the edges. And then I'm going to bump up the eraser in size to get a more fuzzy line so it doesn't look as though I've just cut this out of a magazine per se. You may notice that I forgot to reselect the eraser tool here. That was a mistake on my part and I do go in and fix it later. Um, I didn't record this part, but the concept that I'm doing right now is what you want to do. But make sure that your eraser tool is selected, otherwise you're not gonna end up with a PNG. So then what I do here is make it a little bit bigger. 
and yep you can see right there that I had a little bit of extra that I didn't erase and I went in and erased that later. Now we can see here after erasing everything it becomes a PNG and some people stop here but what I like to do is add a background color to my image. Usually I just use white just because a lot of my designs I know people are going to want on darker colored t-shirts and things and I just prefer that um, if you're just doing stickers you probably don't necessarily need this but it is nice to have a white background or a different colored background just to help with your thing. And here I am using the one tool to select the area and this will help with our background. So I want to make sure that I'm on a separate layer for this, the layer below. This is very important and I want to make sure that the eraser tool is off and that the right color is selected. Then I just use my fill bucket tool and just fill that in a bunch until it's to the consistency that I want. Sometimes I like to play around with this and make a thicker line depending on the design. But for now, this is good for this demonstration. And then you just export the document as a PNG. And this is very important for Krita. You want to make sure that you have your transparency file on. And you're good to go. Next, log on to Redbubble. Add new work, then upload. Then you add the title, tags, and description. Then go through and choose what products you want your art on and adjust the proportions for each product as desired. One nice thing about Redbubble is that you can change the background color of your image really easily. And you can copy and paste that color code to see what it looks like on other products. And once you've decided on a color, you can copy and paste that color code into the thing that says HEX and it will automatically use that color for the background of your products that need it. What I also like is that you have the option to price each item individually. For example, if you want to price each of your artboard prints separately, you have the freedom to do that. If you want, you can also repeat your designs for larger products like blankets and tapestries, etc. Then once that's done, choose what media, your default product, if it's mature content, and who can view your art. I'm choosing private for now because I want to review the mockups of each product before they get published to my shop. Then once the page is loaded, I can view and download product mockups. And if I don't like something, I can always go back and change it. Redbubble likes to put out new products sometimes, so when this happens, I usually go back and edit my older designs way long after they've been published. So if you don't like how your art looks on a particular product, or if you no longer want it to be public, you have the liberty to do that. Next we have Society6 and Threadless. If I'm being honest, I don't upload much on Society6 or Threadless, but it is good to have your art in more than one place so more people can see it. And though many products overlap, I keep some of my designs on each of these sites because they each have a different selection of items. For example, Society6 has wrapping paper, curtains, wallpaper, they even have furniture, like benches, stools, coffee tables, and credenzas, which are cupboards, I guess. I didn't know this was a thing until I logged into my account today. But what the heck? How do you how do you ship this? Do you assemble it yourself? Oh. Oh, they have a video. Oh. Wow, this is impressive. 
You know, maybe I should design my own furniture. Note to self, become a furniture designer. Anyways, some items unique to Threadless include snapback caps, cut and sew t-shirts, laundry bags, which I have purchased, cuffed beanies, shoes, neck gaiters, dad hats, skateboards, and they also have a ton of design challenges that you can enter. And if people like your design, they'll print it and feature it on the official Threadless site. After you've uploaded and published your art, it's time to share it with others. Pick your poison of social media and get it out there! My current preferred poison is Instagram. I also encourage you to order your own art. If you think getting Amazon packages are a party, well then try receiving packages with your own artwork in them. It's amazing. It's a feeling like nothing I can describe. It's, it's really something, man. It's really something. Well, that's it for me. Feel free to check out another video on my channel or check out my Instagram or Skillshare or whatever you want to do. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you on the interwebs.